Mehsan Sagay is an award-winning screenwriter and producer. She won the NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Writing in a Motion Picture for Fox Searchlight's Bell. The script was also nominated for a Humanitas Prize. Sagay's producing and screenwriting credits include Secret Laughter of Women and Their Eyes Were Watching God, starring Holly Berry and executive produced by Oprah Winfrey. She is writing Battersea Rise for BBC, imprinted for ITV, adapting the life of Dame Daphne Sheldrick, Life, Love, and Elephants, and FELA for focus features for the screen. Misa. Hello. In these times when everything and everyone seems motivated by anger and hate, and I include me in that, I found the perfect antidote. Joey Clark's script. Joey has everything that makes a great writer, talent, persistence, a strong and authentic voice. But what I loved most about this script was his characters and relationships. Each character is real, each relationship is complex, and however flawed, drawn with a deep understanding. It's a script with no easy villains, just what happens when your best isn't good enough. He's not afraid of some of the more weighty issues of our times, but whereas we talk about the opioid crisis, often in terms of the person who's passed or the parents left behind, he's talked about what happens to a generation of children. It starts with a touching portrait of parenthood, love and wisdom being passed from father to daughter, but right up there, we have a devastating loss because heroin can come for anyone. I was absolutely wrung out by this opening. I thought, what is this Game of Thrones? <laughs> the children are alone and even their dog is in a pound and at every level, the system fails them. Love isn't what you need, it isn't what you have to give, but what is needed, and the, the, the system can't cope with these two children. I met Joey, and I asked him what motivated him to write this script. He said it was his relationship with his sister, except she wasn't mean. And I said, well, to me, Riley wasn't mean. I hoped she was mean. When the world is upside down, heartless, incomprehensible, and uncaring, she will not give measure for measure. When all society's norms are abandoned, she will stand firm. She will not abandon Miles the way the world has abandoned her. She's brave and angry. She refuses to be cowed or made callous, a reminder that we have to be fierce in our defense of kindness, decency, and humanity. In Riley, he has written a heroine for our times. And I loved his writing. And I loved him too, because he was born in Missouri and he started in California, but like his script, every turn in his life has been motivated by love. Love took him to Colorado uh, when he got married. Love took him to Missouri, back to Missouri when he had a baby. And all the time, he kept writing. And when I spoke to him about all of the wonderful opportunities that would, were going to come his way now, I noticed that the thing that made his eyes light up was when he talked about his son. He's a man whose eyes shine when he thinks about his boy. And today, he is a nickel fellow, Joey Clark. Thank you very much, Misan, for that's some of the kindest words anybody's ever said about me. And uh, <laughs> Misan flew from London a couple days ago to come say them, which is <laughs> no one's ever flown across an ocean to say anything about me. 
uh, I want to thank our, our actors. That was fantastic. I really appreciate that. And I want to thank Jen. That was also fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, I want to thank Don and G. Nickel for making this and uh, keeping it going forever. Um, I, want, I want to thank Joan Y., Chris Cartier, and Jacob Richardson for uh, running the fellowship. Um, this week has been incredible because of you guys, and the uh, last six weeks where I've bothered you with all my stupid questions and were, was also very great. You were quick to answer everything, and it was very appreciative. I want to thank Robin Swicord and the entire committee for thinking my script and me were worthy of this uh, opportunity and this, this incredible gift that you're really giving us to, to open the door into, into this community. Um, and I want to thank all the readers along the way in, in uh, the Nickel Committee, or the, not the committee, but the, uh, the readers who thought it was worth passing along to the committee eventually. Um, as, as a writer, you, you kind of uh, keep going, not really knowing if it's ever going to lead to anything, and, and, you, and you hope it will, and you just tell yourself it will because you want to. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier to go along that journey when you have a family and people supporting you. And that starts most with uh, my beautiful wife, Samantha. Um, uh, Samantha would, would really probably like nothing more but to have a normal marriage where we, where we put the kids to bed and then hang out. Uh, but she's willing to sacrifice it so I can pursue this nonsense and go right. And I, I know it's a big sacrifice for you, and I'm internally grateful. Um, I want to thank, uh, it doesn't even make sense, but I want to, <laughs> my, uh, my, my son, Augie, he's, he's not even two, so he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but he's, uh, <laughs> uh, he, I mean, without him, I wouldn't be standing up here because I would not have really felt like I had a purpose to really try to become someone that he might look up to one day and try to be a walking example, hopefully, of what you can do if you work hard and um, have a passion and surround yourself with good people, and you should also stop biting me. And um, I want to I want to thank my mom and her fiance Rick who are up here from Wilmington, North Carolina, taking a break from hurricane rebuilding. And um, I think my mom has probably believed in me more than anyone else. And I probably don't let you know enough how much that means to me, but it really does uh, mean a lot. Um, next note card. Uh, I want to thank my, my dad and stepmom Cindy, who, Joe Clark, the original, I'm the sequel. They, uh, they're, they're here from St. Louis, and they've also always encouraged me to keep going. And I've said in the past, I'll say it again, if I turn out to be half the man my dad is, I'll, I'll be doing just fine. Um, I want to thank uh, Eric and Dana, and I believe Anis is here, and uh, Dana I'm sure is watching with Aaron in Kansas City. I want to thank you guys for always uh, supporting me and encouraging me and not you know, not saying you're not going to do that. Uh, I want to thank all my in-laws who, uh, even though I wanted to do this, they said let me marry their daughter or and sister. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank Kelly and Ty, who are probably watching in Texas, my sister Kelly, uh, who, as me son pointed out, um, it's no coincidence that yeah, I'm able to write uh, very close relationships between uh, a brother and a sister. And... Uh, even even like I, I, even if I, I said on the Facebook thing, like my, my sister kind of gets me more than a lot of people, and a lot of people are talking about this script. I have a favorite scene, and then a lot of people I talk to have a different favorite scene. And the one person who who said my favorite scene is this scene uh, it was my sister. So it was like we she was still there <laughs> talking about what I like. Um, well, it's great to have. I'm trying to hurry up. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it's great to have um, a family who's who's always supporting you and whatnot. It's also important to have people who actually know what they're talking about, reading your stuff and saying, <laughs> "Keep going." And um, that starts that starts with my my good man Howie Kramer, who is here somewhere. Um, I've I've wanted to quit several times and have quit several times, and Howie's always there bringing me back in. And Howie's uh, my first person to read anything I write, and the only person who read Miles before I submitted it. And I, I would not be standing up here without Howie's friendship. Uh, I would not be up here without the friendship of uh, my, my buddy Matt Taylor in Chicago either. Uh, Matt and I kind of fell in love with movies together back when we were teenagers, going to Plaza Frontenac and Tivoli in St. Louis and realizing my movies that were, uh, there, there are good movies that don't have to, you know, be huge and 
There's a lot of good small movies, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. Um, and I want to thank, uh, there's several other readers who read my stuff, and I've learned a lot from their notes. Tracy Meyer, Sam Zwiebelman, Don Broda, and uh, anyone else who's ever read anything that I've written at some point in my life. I, I really appreciate it. And thank you all very much. Thanks,